and welcome back to another podcast episode with Brittany Bundles. You are listening to the Brittany Bundles podcast where we empower people through entrepreneurship. And today on the podcast, what I want to do is something a little bit different on this platform, at least for for this podcast. Um, Typically, if you've been following me on my YouTube channel at Brittany Bundles, I do uh, frequently do question and answers videos, so Q&A videos, and I decided to go ahead and bring that to the podcast. So I'm going to be answering some questions that I have received, um, and I'm going to be just just going off of how I feel, uh, my experiences, my advice, recommendations, and things like that. I do want to encourage all of you to share this episode with a family member or a friend. You can share this episode via text message. You can share it via social media, you can share it via email, and then you can also um, turn it on while you're writing with someone so that they can hear this information as well. Also, if you have any questions that you would like to be answered on this podcast, feel free to send me an email. I will go over my email information uh, actually now as well as towards the end of the podcast, but my email is btalks, that is B-T-A-L-K-S at yahoo.com. So if you are interested in this question and answers podcast episode, be sure to stay tuned. I'm going to be touching on should you spend more in ads than you're grossing. Um, From my perspective, uh, when is a good time to get a brick and mortar location for your business? What branding items are considered must have? Branching out and not relying solely on your family members and friends as your customers and clients. And then also we're going to be going over PPP loans. So if you are interested in today's episode again, please go ahead and share the episode. Make sure that you're staying tuned and we're going to get started in just one moment. Welcome back to another podcast episode with Courtney Bundles. All right, so we are back. Again, we're going to be doing a Q&A on this podcast episode, questions and answers. And the first question that I'm going to start on is, should I spend more in ads than I'm grossing? I actually received this question under one of my YouTube videos, and I um, did address um, this question and answer the question to the best of my ability. From my perspective, of course, um, on my YouTube channel, it's linked in the comments. Um, but I'm going to you know, I'm gonna go ahead and dive into this. So should you spend more in ads than you're grossing? Um, now we can look at it two different ways. So what I like to tell everyone that I'm working with, uh, whenever I'm giving business advice is that every business is unique. That's why it's really important to do consultations. That's why it's really important to structure a business plan and strategize your next moves for your overall goal. Because there are some businesses that have strategically plans to put a certain amount into marketing, knowing that they're not going to receive that much back up front immediately. Um, For example, you can start a business and you can say, hmm, this year we're going to project to spend at least, let's say, 2000 in paid ads. Okay, being that this is our first year, we're going to project that we're going to make, maybe let's say you you project that you're going to make 800. Maybe you're selling items for $2, you know, and you're like, okay, let's go ahead and say that we're going to, you know, make about 800 this year if everything sticks on pace. There are people that do that. The numbers, again, are just examples, but have that same mentality and that same strategic planning where they purposely intend to spend more in advertising than they know that they're going to or then they anticipate that they're going to receive back in gross um, income or gross profit. Now, I do want to say this. Being an entrepreneur, it's all about planning. Planning, planning, planning. There are some things that I've done with my business that I have not planned. And there are a lot of things that I've done that I have planned. And I've noticed that there's a drastic difference in the success of my business when I think through and I plan what's going to happen. The goal for every business in every season doesn't have to be the same as what you think it should be or doesn't have to be the same as what the next business is doing successful businesses typically have, like I said, things planned out so that it can work in accordance to their overall goal. Um, So I know that it may sound taboo to plan on spending more in ads than you are actually grossing, but it is very common. Even working as a loan officer, working with business owners looking to get financing for different things, it would be very common that they would oftentimes spend a lot in advertising and wouldn't receive as much back in um, gross 
profit. Now, you know, the underwriter would typically send those loans back and say, hey, we need additional income. We may need a spouse on the application because it's showing that they actually incurred losses. We may need a business partner. We may need additional income to compensate for the, the losses that we're showing because it's showing that they're spending more than they're actually making. But if you have a plan behind that, that is going to move your business forward in the long term, I would say, again, that it's not it's not that, that I don't want to say crazy, but it, it's not that um, strange to look at. I constantly get this question a lot, you know, believe it or not. Hey, I don't want to spend more than I'm actually making. But if you think about it, when you first start a business, it is definitely wise to assume that you're not going to make everything that you want to make that first year. Um, not even the second year, perhaps. And what I like to focus on, not just with my business, but with the businesses that I provide counsel to as well, is I like to look at the overall picture and I like to move towards my end goal. So I understand that even if this season or this quarter or this year is not going to produce the results that I am looking for in the long run, if it's going to move me closer to those results, I'm all for it. Now, on the flip side, there are businesses that have been in business for years. There's businesses that have tried different marketing strategies, different ad campaigns, and they're spending lots and lots in advertising and marketing, and it's really not benefiting their company. What I would say to that is, if you're noticing that you're constantly doing something, and let me say this too, it does take time. A lot of times entrepreneurs, business owners are doing the right action steps. They have the right plan, the right ideas, but they don't give it enough time. And unfortunately, there's not a specific time frame that I can say, hey, you know, this, this time frame fits all. If your plan is not working by one year, or if your plan isn't working by five years, then go ahead and just ditch it. I can't do that. Um, because every business, like I said before, is definitely different and very unique. And every business owner has a different goal for the short term and long term um, successes of their business. But I can say that one thing that I've tried to do when I noticed that I was spending a lot in ads and it really wasn't making sense to my business and my end goal, I decided to stop my ads. At first, I scaled back a little bit and then I completely stopped and I found a different strategy to actually promote and advertise and market for free. And I found a way to tap into my target audience. So another reason that a lot of entrepreneurs end up spending a lot in ads over what they're actually getting back is the fact that they're marketing and promoting to the wrong audience. That matters. It's not about just paying for ads and just hoping someone that's interested in your services sees it to an extent. It's also making sure that you tap into your specific target audience. That is very, very important. I want to market to people that are interested in what I am doing and what I'm selling and what I'm offering. And so it takes some time to really fine tune your marketing strategies. But I can say that I can see both sides of the coin. Um, so it all depends to answer that question. I personally stopped when I noticed that I was doing the same activity, the same behavior, paying the same amount of money, if not more, and I was not moving towards my goals, short term nor long term. So I decided to try something different that actually worked in my best benefit. Um, and there are also businesses that have decided to try something different as well, different than what I tried, and continue to pay for paid ads, and they're reaping the benefits because of that as well. So it all really depends on your overall goal, what feels right to you. And unfortunately, but fortunately, it's going to be some trial and error more than likely, meaning that you are going to have to try some things and also realizing that you are possibly going to lose money in your business. Business is not all about gains, 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 but there are losses that are associated with business as well. So sometimes we do have to go through and do some paid ads and some advertising where we're not paying and really see what's going to work best for us with the understanding that, hey, this may work or it may not, but it's all about finding out and moving closer to that code, so to speak, that we are wanting to crack in order to move us toward our overall vision of success for our business. Now, the second question that I want to move to is when should I get a brick and mortar location for my business? Now, I don't want to sound repetitive, 
with this answer, but it all depends. So there are some businesses that create their business plan with the intention of opening a brick and mortar location and they create their website later. You know, they're, they're wanting to be a brick and mortar location first and they're not really focused too much on their website. There are some locations or some businesses that have decided to open them both simultaneously, both brick and mortar locations and websites. There are some businesses that only operate online. So it really depends on what you're wanting to do. Um, in my experience, Experience. When I opened my salon, having a salon was something that I could not do online. I wasn't going to be able to um, have anyone doing hair strictly online. You know, that's a service that has to be physically performed. And so I decided to open a location for that reason. Now, once I got into my salon and I realized that it wasn't what I envisioned and it was no longer something that I enjoyed doing and I wasn't really able to maximize all of the opportunities that I wanted to maximize with my business being at that location most of the time, I went through a few different options in my mind. I went through a few different choices and after talking to family members and friends and praying on the, the situation, I ultimately decided that it's going to work best for my business to stop the salon services at that moment and to conduct business strictly online. Now, I can say that that was a great choice for me, but I do want to say this too. If you decide to open your business as a brick and mortar location and you're not really certain because there are a lot of entrepreneurs that aren't certain as to if they're going to stick in the business or not. There are entrepreneurs that are more certain than others. For example, if I had been running my salon for five plus years in that brick and mortar location and I was looking for another location, I may feel a little bit more comfortable in that circumstance to mortgage or to actually purchase a building for my second location versus renting. Being that it was my first building, I wasn't completely sure as to how everything was gonna go or what I was going to do. And like I've said in a lot of different videos on my YouTube channel, as well as on my podcast, I like to think ahead. So I'm not just planning for today, this month, this year. I'm not just planning for the good. I'm not just planning for the bad, but I'm taking all of that into consideration. And I'm thinking about what's going to be the wisest decision for me. And that's something that takes confidence to be able to do. You have to have some kind of self-assurance to know that, okay, this is something that I feel confident in doing and I'm going to do it no matter what. So what I felt that, I decided to go ahead and rent. Because like I said, I didn't know if I was going to stay in that location or not. It's to my benefit that I did that because ultimately I did not stay in that location and I didn't have the pressure or the responsibility of having to sell that building. I was able to literally pay out of my lease and, um, you know, move on with my business. So to answer the question, when should you get a brick and mortar location for your business? Whenever you have budgeted, the amount of money that it's going to take for your deposit and I would say at least six months of rent. Um, also, when you have a clear business plan as to how you're going to generate income, even if the main avenue that you're expecting income to come from is not efficient or not up to the amount that you anticipated, what other options do you have to still bring revenue into your business while you have rent to pay, utilities to pay, equipment to pay, and possibly even employees? So once you have everything mapped out as far as the financial aspect and as far as how the business is going to run and operate, also making sure that you're in um, alignment with the laws for that specific state and for the business that you're wanting to offer, I would say go for it, but go for it in a way that's going to work best for you. Look into the different options. Look to see if there is a buyout option for your lease. Look to see how you could get out of the brick and mortar location if you needed to or if you wanted to. You always want to exhaust all options, not saying that you're going into anything anticipating it to turn out bad, but it's saying that you're going into it with a well-round view, understanding Understanding that this could go really, really well, or it could go really, really bad. But either way, I want to make sure that I'm still financially stable. I want to make sure that my assets are protected. And I want to make sure that I can still pivot my business so that my business can still operate even without this brick and mortar location. So pretty much to sum it all up, when everything is in order, finances, your business plan, the structure, um, also your fallback plans, uh, 
other additional revenue options in case your mainstream is not working as efficient as you anticipated it to, then that would be a time that I would recommend looking for a brick and mortar location. Also, if you are realizing that it's more beneficial to sell in person or to provide a service in person than it would be online. There are a lot of businesses that have started brick and mortar locations and have transitioned to strictly online because they found that it works better. They're making more money online and they don't have as much overhead costs. So just taking into account what's going to work best for your overall goal plan and your business. Now, the next question is what branding items are considered must have in quotation marks, must haves. Um, so again, it really depends. But to sum it up, just to provide a blanket answer, I would definitely say business cards. Now, I made a video on my YouTube channel about a year ago, and I was asking uh, in that video for others' opinions, just wanting to know if business cards are important to people still or not. Some people said they were, some people said they weren't. Some people said that they used their social media as their business card, so they provide their social media information when anyone asks. Um, some people said that they still really believe in business cards. For me personally, I would recommend everyone that I am working with to have business cards, including myself. Why? Uh, it's not because I don't have social media, because I do, but just thinking that if I'm in passing with someone in the grocery store and I tell them my name, I don't want them to have to remember it. I don't want them to forget. You know, I don't want them to have to dig through their purse or their bag or their pocket to find a pen and something to write on. It just works more convenient for me to hand out a business card. It looks more professional. It looks like, in my opinion, that you took the time out to really brand yourself. And it also is something that is, in my opinion, again, not challenging to obtain, not challenging to create. There's many of websites and many different options. You can even create business cards at home. Um, so it's something that's very seamless to do and the benefits can definitely be very beneficial. I mean, even if someone gives the business card to someone else, it's still passing on the information about your business. So I believe business cards are definitely a business must have no matter what industry you're in. And I also believe websites. Business cards and websites. Now, there are some businesses that do not use websites. There are people that drop ship hair extensions through me and they sell strictly on social media and it is really working well for their business. Um, they have consistent sales and like I said, it's working well and they don't have a website. They do um, DM orders or email orders and they provide the tracking information via email and DM and people purchase re repeatedly with them. Um, so I'm not saying that a website is definitely a, a, you know, a must have in every scenario or for every business, but I'm saying that I do recommend obtaining a website. Why? Because it does provide a professional feel for your business. Um, number two, it allows customers and clients, potential customers and clients as well, to be able to read up about yourself, to read up about your business, and to read up about the products and services that you're offering. It also provides record keeping. Uh, so if you are someone wanting to keep track of your sales, I find it easier to keep track of it through my online store. So I already have different ways of keeping track of my sales and my spending expenses so that when I file my taxes, it can be way more efficient and effective. Um, I've made videos about that as well. So make sure you check out my channel after this podcast at Brittany Bundles. Um, but it just makes things easier. So if I do have to go back and look at a certain order or want to go back and reference a certain customer, say they're um, emailing or they're texting and they're like, hey, I want to order the same amount that I ordered last time for my wholesale order. What did I order? You have that record. And not just that, but you also have um, the ability to send out newsletters. Now you can do that without a website too. I'm just saying that there's so many benefits in a website. And there honestly have been so many business owners that have noticed the importance of websites after COVID hit. There were a lot of businesses that were expressing how important a website really is and how they wish that they put more time into their website just in case something like this were to happen. Um, it does also make it easier to sell gift cards if you needed to. So it's just, it, it's something that's a necessity for my business. I can't say that it is for everyone's business, but if you were to ask my opinion, what are considered branding must-haves, I would definitely narrow it down to business cards and a website. Now, the fourth question is, my only customers and clients are my family and friends. Any advice? Yes. So we've talked about this a lot on this podcast, not just through my entrepreneurial journey, but also with some of the guests that were on this podcast. And I remember feeling so depressed and so down, wanting more support from my family and friends and not realizing that my family and friends are not my target audience. My family and friends aren't going to get me to my monetary goals. Um, and honestly, I wouldn't even want them to, you know, I don't want to 
have to force or beg anyone into buying my products. I remember I was on a family call and on the family call, my family members asked me to talk a little bit about my business, talk a little bit about how I am able to sustain um, from different avenues that I uh, have ventured into for uh, revenue streams. And I was explaining everything that I did and they asked how could they help. And I told them that the way that they could help is by sharing my posts on social media if they see them and if it's something that they find value in. I don't want anyone, family members and friends included, sharing anything that they really don't find value in. I don't want you purchasing anything uh, just to purchase it. You know, I'll take it, but I'd much rather have people, including family members and friends that purchase based on the value that they're seeing, because that's truly the way that you're going to build up a true a consistent group of dedicated customers and clients and have repeat sales. The goal is not just to have a sale here and there or just to have a sale one time and never have that customer back to your website, but that goal is to really build relationships based on the value and based on the, the need or the want that you're solving for that person at that time. So my advice would be, to branch outside of your family members and your clients. I branched outside of my city, I branched outside of people that I knew, and I marketed to people that were in my target audience, and I saw great benefits. I stopped sitting back waiting and even wanting people that were really not interested in my products and services to purchase just because we were friends. I understand that there's other ways that you can promote your family members and friends, such as sharing their posts if you find it valuable, inspirational, motivational, just like I mentioned. There's other ways that you can support your friends by being someone to listen to uh, or someone that is going to provide advice if you have different insight or someone that they can come to and confide in uh, with their entrepreneurial struggles. So there's other ways that family members and friends can support you, but I would definitely recommend everyone challenge themselves to get outside of that family member and friend group. Now, it is definitely okay to sell to your family members and friends. Um, honestly, you know, if, if the family member that you're considering selling to or the friend that you're considering selling to is interested, I would definitely recommend um, selling and promoting your products and looking at them as customers and clients as well. I talked about in my ebook too, about how I recommend starting within your family members and friends to promote your business. Now, one of the reasons that I recommend that is so that it gives you uh, more experience and it kind of helps you become more familiar with offering your products and services, with being able to ask open-ended questions. And it gives you practice so that when you're outside of that ring and people are not biased and they're not listening just because you're you, but they're actually actually uh, deciding if they want to listen to you or not based on how your presentation is and based on how you treat them and based on the, the quality and the value that you ultimately can provide to them through your products and services. Uh, it's going to really, really show up. All that time that you have practicing with your family members and friends is really going to help build up your skills um, from my experience. So, you know, there's nothing wrong necessarily with starting with your friends and family, but I would definitely recommend to branch outside of that. If you have support, great. If you don't, it's still great because it is going to push you outside, if you allow it, outside of your comfort zone and pretty much make you have to uh, open up and to share the word about your business, products, and services to people that you completely don't know, to complete strangers. And to my surprise, there are a lot of strangers that support my business way more than anyone that I know, not because they necessarily love me more, but because I was able to provide a non-biased presentation and offer based on what they wanted, and they found value in what I was providing. So I really, really was stressed really try to get outside of that circle, really try to push yourself past your fears. I know one of my fears was talking to different people, um, breaking outside of my shell, not being too shy, but it's either like I'm doing it or I'm not. You know, that's what I had to tell myself. Either you're going to do this business to the best of your ability or you're not. So I decided to do that. Now, the last question that I'm going to go over is who qualifies for PPP loans? And I have a note here that references the website, which is sba.gov. There are so many videos on YouTube about who qualifies and so many posts and things going around. And honestly, all of the information is definitely accessible by going to SBA. So if you go to that website, there are so many um articles and so much information on who qualifies 
um, how you could qualify and different things like that. But also the SBA.gov, they have options where you can um, read about different loans. So there's more loans than just the PPP and who qualifies and things like that. So I am going to recommend everyone go over to SBA and read up on information pertaining to the PPP loans. They also have different loan options on their website, but I'd rather you go over there and just learn more information about everything that they have to offer. Um, I would do a video on it if enough people um, email me and say that that's something that they want to go over together. I'm more than happy to do that. But if you're just wanting more information, I recommend going right to SBA.com. All of the information or not com, I'm sorry, SBA.com gov excuse me all of the information is there um, and i believe there's a way that you can even reach out if you have questions they provide different um, lenders in your area for your reference and things like that so that is the website that i'm going to reference for that question and that pretty much sums up all of the question and answers for today's episode. So again, if you do have any other questions that you like addressed or uh, gone over on the Brittany Bundles podcast, please be sure to email me at btalks, that's B-T-A-L-K-S at yahoo.com. Also, if you'd like to be a guest on the Brittany Bundles podcast, email the same email address. Or if you'd like to sponsor an episode, email me as well. As always, I don't want the conversation to end. If you have any other suggestions, again, email me. It's that simple. Email me or go ahead and reach out to me on any of my social media platforms. I am on YouTube at Brittany Bundles. That is Brittany, B-R-I-T-T-N-E-Y Bundles, B-U-N-D-L-E-S. I'm on Facebook, Brittany Bundles. Twitter, Brittany Bundles, and Instagram, Brittany underscore Bundles. Until next time, I'll talk to you all on the next podcast episode.